the record. And we are live. Um, welcome to Wellbeing Wednesdays. I'm Nurse Rachel. Um, and I've been doing these sessions for a few weeks now and I really, really enjoy doing them because I love learning about how other people access wellbeing. Um, so we do a weekly wellbeing session with guest speakers on one of four subjects, health and wellbeing as a general, parenting, pets and hobbies and business. And I run them at either 12.30 or 8.30 so that they're accessible to more people. Ground rules, um, so obviously I think these go without saying, but just in case, no rude behavior. If um, I notice someone's being rude, I just get you out. Um, and mute and less speaking. And that's just because background, background noise can be distracting with the screen picking in between people. Um, again, I apologize for my small people. They have absolutely zero regard for anybody else. Um, we have a YouTube link, which um, will be out after this. So please share it. Um, Amy's business, um, she's taken the time out of her day to come and share this with us. It's her own information. She's sharing it for your personal use and um, it's here to be enjoyed. But if you've enjoyed it, please give her a thank you. Please um, like her Facebook page, like her Instagram, um, really um, connect with her and buy her products if you like them. Um, if you enjoy my content, I have a Kofi account that supports my newly formed parent sanctuary, which is helping parents in lockdown with their mental and physical health. Um, and that's kofi.com forward slash parent sanctuary. So a little bit about me, who am I? Well, I used to be the blue haired vegan, um, but as you can see, my blue hair has all grown out. I'm a mum of four, I'm a nurse, I'm a transform transformational coach, I'm my mental health rock facilitator, a sling librarian with slinglibrary.com. I help people transform their homes to be chemical free with Enya. I'm a founder of Parent Sanctuary um, with Nature Walks for Wellbeing, and I'm the lead in the Crying Colic and Allergy Clinic. Now I'm going to go for a sleep after saying all that because um, like many mums, I wear mum many hats. Uh, so um, what I do to survive the days is breathe. Now, this might sound really silly, but we do spend so much of our time with our shoulders somewhere up near our ears. And as we get stressed, we hold our tension in our bodies and we start to feel like the world is on our shoulders and it's up to us to keep it there. But what we forget to do is that our body works best when we are in calm, relax, we get our best um, ideas, we get our best motivation. We find our, um, our calm and relax our most beneficial part of our, our lives. So when I feel like the world is bubbling up, I remember to meditate in a moment and that's simply taking a deep breath in and the mental processes that go into this one breath really change my outlook for the next five minutes so when my four and six year old are fighting before I start yelling and saying hey stop that fighting or words to those effects I take this deep breath in and I think about how I actually want to respond to their outbursts I think about what I want them to feel from my response I want to think about how I I want to engage with them and how I would have felt if someone was speaking to me, what would have been the way to get me to behave? And it's not calm down. It's never calm down. It's never breathe. Um, it's never count to 10. It's always about being that calm for my children. So, and we breathe and fill our lungs we can change our fight flight freeze mode into our um calm and reflect mode and we can completely change the way our day is going because it's never the problem it's how we deal with the problem and i think 
my screen is going to work. So this week's sponsor, this is when I have to remember to stop sharing and come back to main screen, is Amy. And Amy is from AH um, Jewelry and she is on Facebook and Instagram. I'm just going to pin you to be main screen and I'm going to give you permission to share your screen. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm just finding that permission. No, it's just while you're doing that, it's it really resonates. Everything that you've just said really resonates with me, Rachel. And actually, the talk that I'm going to give kind of encompasses all of those four areas that you mentioned. And breathing has been a massive <laughs> breathing properly and pausing to reflect has been a massive part of my I hate saying my journey, but that's essentially what it is. So, yeah, so important to remember to breathe. <laughs> so I have prepared uh, some images that I'd like to share with you. So I am now going to try and bring that up. OK, can you see can you see that? Fab. OK, so hi, I'm Amy. Um, as Rachel's kindly introduced me, my business is AH Jewellery. Um, I design and make jewellery for my workshop that I'm sitting in right now in Sobbybridge, West Yorkshire. Um, this is me at work with my dog. So uh, Cooper, my French bulldog, regularly comes in to jump on me, stop me working, encourage me to breathe and take a break. And I have to say, dogs are absolutely brilliant for reminding you to take a break. Uh, and he regularly does that. So I'm always grateful for a little, little Cooper cuddle. Um, so I started my business as a hobby um, from a desk on my landing. I've now upgraded to the spare room and I'm hoping to convert the garage uh, outdoors into an outdoor workspace this year. Um, some of the benefits of being at home are to be there with my son. This is Joshua, he's now 12, um, and my partner, Ed. Um, I used to spend a lot of time commuting, so I was rarely at home, and it's lovely to have reversed that and to be able to spend much more time with the family. So um, I make all sorts of different designs, sort of geometric, minimal styles to more rustic, organic pieces, um, mainly in sterling silver, but also in copper and brass and gold. And I find inspiration everywhere. So go out with a dog every day. Um, and I'll often take my phone and snap little details of interesting forms and shapes and lines and shadows and whatnot. And sometimes these enter into my subconscious and they come out in the form of a new piece of uh, jewelry design. Um, I start typically with a piece of um, wire or sheet, and then I will manipulate this, cut into it using a piercing saw, hammer it, solder it, file it, bend it, shape it, um, imprint it with different textures um, to create different collections. Uh, sometimes I oxidize them like these pieces here, which you plunge the whole piece into a stinky liver of sulfur solution. It turns it black and then you can sand it back. So you get a really nice sort of contrast between high, silvery, shiny areas, and then that lovely sort of rich matte black texture. So I wanted to just go back a little bit and talk about how I got into jewelry making in the first place, because um, it was quite by accident. It was definitely not a deliberate um, career move. <laughs> I um, did a degree in fine art, so I've always sort of been into making and creating. Um, realized I wanted to work in art galleries and museums. So I did a master's in heritage studies and started a career in, um, in education in, in galleries. Worked in some amazing places um, and really enjoyed my career. Um, had my little boy in 2008. Um, I've just popped some more doggy pictures in here because I know we're thinking about pets and hobbies. This is our old dog, a beautiful, loving staffy who Joshua tested to the very limits. He used to ride her like a horse, stick his little fingers in her eyes and her ears, and she tolerated everything. Absolutely brilliant family pet. Um, and I've popped these in because I know that pets and hobbies are central to some of the themes that you're looking at, Rachel. And dogs have always played a massive part in our family life. Joshua's an only child, so it's lovely that he's got another companion in a dog. And it can the dogs just contribute such a massive amount to my well-being as well. So pop those in there. Um, so by the time Joshua turned three, a series of 
fairly traumatic things had occurred. Um, Joshua was really croupy as a baby and he was in and out of hospital quite a lot. Um, and we all know if you've got young children, when you hear that croupy cough, it is, there's nothing worse than that sound when your child can't breathe. He ended up in intensive care in an induced coma. It got really bad. Um, he couldn't breathe on his own. Um, Luckily he came out of it um, and then we went back to work and he went back to nursery and, but that kind of trauma stayed with me. I, all I wanted to do was be with my child and I had to be at work. And, you know, I think that was a start of a series of things that led to my own health declining. I had a couple of car crashes, suffered, suffered a couple of bereavements. Uh, my dad got cancer. Uh, Ed was made redundant. I changed my job again, started working even longer hours and I kept getting ill. Mm, I wonder why. Um, I just couldn't see it at the time, but I kept getting tonsillitis every six weeks. And again, I never took time off work to fully recuperate. And lo and behold, the day after Joshua's third birthday, I got ill again and I just didn't get better. Um, I was working at this fabulous organisation at the time. This is the Hepworth Wakefield. Um, I'd put my absolute all into developing these wonderful learning programs for teachers and getting ready for the gallery to open in 2011 and then had another car crash a week before the gallery was due to open so I missed the whole opening and oh really stressed stressed out out to the max um, and felt like I'd let everybody down um, yeah, so I just kept getting ill and I just did not get better. And eventually um, it was diagnosed as ME, sometimes known as chronic fatigue syndrome. We're seeing quite a lot of long COVID sufferers now experiencing very similar symptoms, which most often manifests itself as complete and utter exhaustion, like your, your limbs are filled with lead. So just lifting a cup of tea up to drink is an impossibility. For me, I was having seizures every day. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink on my own. I needed help with everything. If I could leave the house, it was in a wheelchair or a mobility scooter. And as a mother of a three year old, you know, you can appreciate just how how not only frustrating that is, but how guilty you feel about not being able to care for them, play for them, interact as you as you normally would. So inevitably, as well as being physically depleted, I, I got depression. I was lying in bed, unable to interact with the world and I felt rubbish. And one of the things I started to do was to breathe properly. And I did all these different meditations and therapies and desperately trying to get myself out of this horrible situation I'd found myself in. But really the only thing I, I could do was rest and breathe and meditate and just literally take each minute as it came. And very, very gradually, I did start to improve. And I was desperate for some joy in my life because I had very little joy going on. And I'd always wanted to do a silversmithing course, but I'd never had the time because I was always busy working. And lo and behold, I found an evening class at my local college in silversmithing. Ta -da! It was like perfect timing. So I enrolled on this course and very, very well from the very first class I was hooked, but very slowly I developed my own skills. I started asking for, you know, a new hammer for Christmas or a, some new pliers for my birthday and slowly, slowly started building up my kit at home and started mastering the craft. People started wanting to buy it and I was like, this is brilliant. This is something I could perhaps actually earn some money from. And in 2016, I launched my own business, registered self-employed, was still on dis disability benefits at the time, actually. Um, but there's a certain amount of work that you're permitted to do whilst still claiming disability benefits. So it's that sort of crossover period where I was te really testing the water to see what I could physically achieve and where the whole self-employed business journey might take me but I'm very happy to say it's grown year on year last year I won the best business of the year award through the Sober Bridge Network which was great um, and I've actually I've given up my other part-time job that I was doing so I'm now working full-time full-time on my own business which is very exciting um, so I sell online uh, through my website and Etsy and various other online platforms. And I'm also stocked in various shops and galleries. Um, and I used to do quite a lot of craft fairs, although 
understandably they have paused for the time being but I love as well as the actual making I love helping I love meeting people chatting to people and helping them find a perfect piece of jewelry for them or the perfect gift for a loved one um, so I really love the fact that I've got lots of loyal regular customers who come back time and time again for you know gifts for different people on different occasions which is fabulous um, something that is quite popular for gifts is a jewellery subscription so you get sent a piece of jewellery through the post each month um, I do sort of personalised hand stamping as well and last minute gifts are great uh, in the form of a gift voucher if you've left it really last minute uh, I used to love running jewellery making parties for kids, um, often birthdays, we'd go out to a cafe or someone's house and I'd take all my kit of beads and charms and whatnot and then every child would make a selection of different pieces of jewellery that they could take away with them. But again, that's something else lockdown put uh, an end to. So I adapted that into the form of these kits that can be sent through the post. So I've got two kits, one for four years plus and one for eight years plus. Um, the younger ones have got nice chunky beads with big holes, so easy threading, which in itself is a very pleasing activity for young kids to do. But then you actually get to wear something at the end of it, which is lovely. Um, so, yeah, I'm just coming to the end of uh, my little spiel. But um, I just wanted to kind of as I was putting this together, it, I think it's useful to look back on where you've where you've come from. And for me, it really was a hobby before a business. Um, and I think sometimes it's useful to reflect on why you got into it in the first place. Um, for me, um, it definitely wasn't a perfect business model. I just made a start on something that I thought could fit in with my lifestyle and developed it as, um, as I went along. Um, and if I was sort of giving advice to anyone else that was thinking of doing the same, I would say just make a start. Um, and see where it takes you because you know every week's you look you're picking up new new skills and things as you go along for me building a good support network was really um instrumental in not feeling quite so alone on a self-employed um as a self-employed business because it can be a bit uh of a lonely venture and for me networking which is where um Rachel and I met has been really useful for meeting people with other areas of expertise that can offer guidance and support in areas that you don't know about um, has been really useful. Um, and these are some of the, some of the women, sorry, were you? I just wanted to say, I can recognize obviously Joelle, um, Caroline and um, Antonia, and I possibly know some of the other women there. <laughs> their photos are not the photos I'm used to seeing of them. So if I've missed you and I do know you, I apologize. <laughs> um yeah no we our paths cross with many fantastic uh other business owners along the way um which i have found invaluable um as i said just sort of offering advice on some of those areas like accounting and marketing and all the areas that you don't initially think about you know you get into it as a hobby you do the thing that you're best at doing that you love doing but there are so many other areas that you also need to make work to to keep it running as a, as a viable business venture um and sometimes you know i think oh god if only i was still working for such and such i'd be earning this much money now and you know i'm not earning that much and it's a bit frustrating but it's really important to take a breath remember why you got into it in the first place i didn't get into this to make money you know my life was changed and I had to find something that I could fit into um, that new way of living and I have to say having balance in your life and doing something that brings you joy both mentally physically spiritually emotionally intellectually um, we need to nourish all of those areas of our well-being and if you can find a way of working that allows you to do that then that's a massive win in my book um, Bearing all that in mind, I'm a massive supporter of other small businesses and um, I launched a campaign on International Women's Day uh, to recognise and celebrate some beautiful women that we can see here, um, all of whom have bought jewellery from me at some point, um, but they all also run their own businesses. So we've got 25 women all together and I'm featuring a different woman every day, a different woman and her business every day on my social media channels. Many of them are offering a giveaway or special offer on their products and services. 
Um, so there's a loads of amazing prizes to be won. Uh, so well worth checking out. I'm giving away one of these sets of jewellery as well. So it's all running till the end of March. So it's well worth checking out if you fancy discovering some fab businesses and possibly winning some great prizes. So that's me. Thanks for listening. Um, you can find me on all the usual channels. And, you know, if anyone does want to get in touch with me personally, I, I'm always, always here for a chat. Thank you. I just wanted to say, um, check out the comments below when you're watching on YouTube, um, because that all sounds fantastic. And one of the things that um, sprung to mind is that is why I, your journey is why I got into um, nursing with people on a private basis, um, because we do put so much emphasis onto everything that we, we neglect our own health and it was why I set up as Nurse Rachel in the first place to help people be proactive about their health because of so many people I know that reached that burnout and it took a, a very serious condition to make them slow down and reevaluate what was actually important to them and replan their life goals. Um, so that was um, really sort of important to me. And whilst we were um, recording that um we um we had my twins playing in the craft box at the side of me and they've been pulling shredded paper apart and seeing how it feels to pull shredded paper about there's um a rainbow an explosion rainbow of um tissue paper from when i've done the my mental health rock sessions and i've brought the um end product of the session home going I can't throw this paper away all it's done is been tied up into little balls we'll craft with it at home um, so they've pulled that and thrown it all over my floor they've been exploring um, biodegradable packing materials and seeing what they like to taste and the textures of them they've been playing with pipe cleaners and now they're finishing the pasta, the actual food that I've given them. I, I, it's just so important to allow young children the opportunity to exp just play, because without that, you don't, you know, you, you reach that point, like I reached that point, I probably wouldn't have considered going into silversmithing had I not have, you know, come from some sort of creative background and I spent my career um, advocating the importance of creativity in children and you know, trying to place more emphasis on art and design within the school curriculum and, you know, telling people about the importance of creativity. But for me, I actually wasn't doing anything for myself. And it's only in hindsight. I think, why, why didn't, why wasn't I actually putting into practice what I was preaching every day, but I was so busy working. I felt like I didn't have the time to do it. And it's, it's crazy. You know, you do. And for me, I absolutely reached that point and I couldn't see the, mess I'd got myself into I was in the thick of it it's only kind of looking back and thinking oh well that's probably why I got ill <laughs> so important to just take those regular breaks pause and just play you know just we all need to play it's 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 a calming activity for our hands and minds isn't it the um this week or this last couple of weeks there's been a few people that I've wanted to connect with and I haven't connected with them and I've actually sent them a message saying I've been writing policy and I've reached the end of my capabilities I have really told them that I've not contacted them because I am taking care of my own well-being and I couldn't fit you in on top of writing these really important documents on safeguarding children and I wanted to make sure I got that right so that we can apply for the funding so that we can do things um, that are going to be beneficial to people both across the UK and um, in our local area as well um, and, and another sort of unrelated more it is related um, I guess one of the metaphors that I, I used this week were was that this was made to carry air like it's it's full of air um and if we imagine that this was only ever made to carry air 
but we're searching for the things that fit in it. So we're searching for the things that are going to make this bottle full of something because we've forgotten that it was supposed to be full of air. Um, and I think so many people that are, are looking for things to make them happy, to make them richer, to make them um, more fulfilled in life are forgetting that they've got their vessel and it's already full. So yeah. they yeah. just need to be with it and appreciate their vessel. It's, it's hard. I think one of the hardest things for myself was learning how to be rather than do because I've always been and I still am I still am, I mean I still suffer from ME I still have bad crashes I still get really ill and I still need to really pace myself but learning how to just be and you know to be able to lie on the bed and breathe and not feel like you're wasting your time or you're letting someone down because you're not you know you're not replying to that email or whatever it's hard but it, you've got to do it <laughs> you can't just keep doing full time it's uh it's not sustainable. I think I think you're totally right. You've got to kind of schedule that time for whatever it is that nourishes you in amongst all those commitments in your diary, just like a regular any other appointment. Otherwise, it doesn't get done, it gets overlooked. And um, yeah, and that's what the 30, yeah. 30 minutes outside a day campaign has been about the March March. Um, it's, it has been about encouraging people to be active for 30 minutes outside. Yeah, but we do appreciate that not everybody can be active. Um, so just spending 30 minutes outside in nature, whether it's sat watching a bird go about its day, whether it's watching the way the shadows of a tree reflect um light through and create different shapes whether it's um ex examining a dead bird yesterday um with a yeah. stick so that we weren't touching the dead bird um but what kind of bird was it where was it going where did what did it die from how did that happen um we found a tree stump covered in moss and ivy and i just said to the children it's the rabbit's tablecloth yeah. Um, so we then got some daffodils and we placed the daffodils on the top of the um, the tablecloth, upturned so that they were the, the um, cups so the rabbits could sit down and have a tea party. Um, we've found mushrooms and sort of exploring what the mushrooms are and then going back and looking in a book together. Um, and it's about connecting ourselves to nature for yeah. our well-being as well. Um, I'm really I'm struggling some days to get my 30 minutes outside in I'm I'm not gonna lie it's very easy to stay in the house it's very easy for me even with four children to just not go outside because get your shoes on why are you naked get your shoes on where's your coat if we go out now we're not gonna oh, you've done a poo right we'll change your nappy it's just so easy to stay in the house yet I know that nature time makes us all feel so much better um, so there's been days where it's been half 11 and I've gone right I'm going to go and sit and listen to the owls <laughs> so that I've got my 30 minutes in today yeah. um, I'm just going to move on and do our last screen and then we can open it up for a bit more discussion um, so um, can I have my um, hosting back please <laughs> it took me a minute to find it with you it's okay if not I can do it without screen sharing so one of the ways that I help fund um, Parent Sanctuary is through helping people to clean with um, without chemicals now this is really good for your health because using chemicals um, to clean your home every time you touch a surface you're picking up residues of those chemicals and um, with Enya you can actually clean six times better with using just water from your tap at home our fibers are made environmentally friendly in Austria and they um, can reach pore deep into the surfaces so that you are gathering the dirt the bacteria the things that are not supposed to be on your surfaces holding on to them in the glove until you choose to wash it out in the washing machine 
Now, I'm not the, um, the clean police. My house is dirty. I have to apologize to people when they go to my toilet and I think, nobody's coming. I won't clean it today. And somebody comes and wants to use the toilet. Um, when I do clean, it's easier, it's quicker, and it gets it six times cleaner. So for me, that's a real benefit. It's also a benefit that the children clean for me. Um, because it's not harsh chemicals and I'm teaching them that they are part of this household and they are capable of um, making mess just as much as they are capable of cleaning that mess up and um, so it's not mum's job it's not dad's job it's everybody in our household's job it is um, a business in a box um, so the um, back office has all been done in order to help people to have their own business whether this is a stopgap or something that you're wanting to do um, as a little sideline or if it's something you want to turn into your full-time income I can help you with that and it's from £99 that you can join so it is a really simple business model and um, it's not for everybody and if you just want to buy the products that's absolutely fine and um, so you can get in touch with me about that and I'm going to stop sharing now and open it up uh, stop recording and open it up to a discussion to invite the other people who've joined us in.